What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu watching a Raging Runner review. I got a review for you. Last night, I caught a sneak preview screening of Divergent. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you to E1 Films for making this advanced screening available and also sixpackbeach.com for the invitation. So thank you very much. And here's my review. Divergent is based off of the novel, the best-selling novel from Veronica Roth. And I'd like to say that I'm very skeptical about films that are based off of novels simply because I don't always believe that novels translate well as a film. Some do, all right, but there are some that just don't and should be left alone as a novel. You know the saying where people always say that, oh, the book is better. Well, I'm sure that this is that case, all right? And I'll explain that in my review. But one thing I also want to mention is that I am reviewing this movie as a film. Okay, I have no knowledge of the book and therefore I'm going to give you a very unbiased review of the film. I'm here to review a film so there's no, uh, there's no reason for you to comment to say that, that this is what happened in the book. Okay, or you should read the book, it's better. Okay, I'm reviewing it as a film. Okay, so first of all, I'll just give you a little bit of a background about the uh, story and that is it's in a future where there's five groups and I can't remember all the names of all the groups but there are um, there are the the um, the physical able body types who are the protectors they're like the petite police <laughs> they're called dauntless and then there's the farmers and then there's the guys who always tell the truth and then there's the guys who are really really smart they're very intellectual and then there are the people who like to help people that's all they do they like to help people all right so there's five groups and these groups were created because uh, society, or rather, there was a great war. There's a really, really big war, and society, the, 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 the founders of this society, believe that by having these groups, it helps their society function as a whole, okay? It keeps the peace, and this is, by having these groups, there will always be some sort of harmony, okay? So, so we've got that down, okay? Eventually, there, it, you come to a point in your age where you have to choose which group you want to be a part of, okay? That's where we bring in our protagonist, uh, played by Shailene Woodley. Her name is Triss, and then she goes through training to become Dauntless, okay? A part of Dauntless. Dauntless is the, the group who is the police, the protectors, basically the most interesting of all five groups, okay? Now, my problem with this film is because it is a mess of a plot, okay? First of all, I think that even at two hours and 23 minutes, a two hour and 23 minute running time, I feel that something is missing. Like the movie is actually kind of slow, but I feel that there should have been more. I feel like the whole a whole chunk of the of the novel is missing from the 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 movie mainly because uh, we are focused so much on only two groups, and that is Dauntless and the original group that uh, Triss came from. Okay, the movie focuses on these two groups alone. And we don't know anything about the other three groups except for what's explained in the very beginning of the movie. Okay, now that poses a problem because we as an audience, we don't understand, um, well, exactly how, how is this, this, these five group? how do these five groups actually maintain the peace? How do they maintain the harmony? How does their society function? We don't, they don't explain anything except that it's supposed to function well with these groups. <laughs> so they should actually give us more details about these three groups. That way we can understand how it works and how it's flawed. Okay, because obviously it's flawed. Otherwise we wouldn't have a movie. Okay, so anyways, so we have Shailene Woodley as Triss. Okay, and another huge problem of this movie is that two thirds or even three quarters of this film is spent like the audience has spent watching her train. She's always training. Okay, that's all she's doing in the entire movie. She's training, and I'm just watching. I'm kind of getting kind of bored. Okay, she's training. This is kind of interesting, but sometimes it's just leading to really nothing. And that's that's what, exactly what it is. It's all training. But what is she training for? <laughs> she's doing nothing but training throughout the like most of the movie. But we don't know what she's training for. They always talk about oh, it's to protect. The society from a possible war a war could happen but then i don't see any threat so right now i don't know who the antagonist is all i'm watching is things happen in front of me 
and it's just really poor storytelling. Okay, it, it's really poor storytelling, and also Shailene Woodley, I think she was miscast. I don't think she's the right uh, actor, 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 <laughs> actor for the for the role of Triss, mainly because. I don't see her, I don't feel that her development towards like a stronger version of it herself, I don't see it to be believable. Maybe it's just her acting or maybe it's the direction, but I'll tell you that it should have been another girl, okay? She is no Katniss Everdeen. And I know I shouldn't be comparing this with Hunger Games, but when I watched the trailer, I felt, oh, this is a Hunger Games ripoff, okay? And I think it's more like it's Hunger Game meets Equilibrium, okay? I'm not going to tell you why exactly, but it's Hunger Game meets Equilibrium. But anyways, I don't feel the development of her character. She goes into training for like a th two-thirds of the movie and really she's still the same, same type of girl except that we're led to believe that she's able to be so like physically capable and I totally don't see it. Okay, I, I, I don't buy it, okay? I, the, the, the development and the evolution of her character is not believable, all right? And I think it has a lot to do with a very messy plot. I, I can't wrap my head around this plot, mainly because so many things are just left as plot holes. And, and, and I'm just left wondering the whole time, what are we watching? We're just watching her train, okay? <laughs> and then... And then you bring in uh, uh, the character played by the character of four played by Theo James, and when I'm watching this movie, I feel some sort of predictability. Okay, I know what's going to happen with his character. Uh, you know, he's played by this good-looking guy who looks like a, a like a like a like a cheap version of James Franco. He's like a low rent, a low budget cheap James Franco, <laughs> and he's like the best-looking guy in the entire movie. You know, something is going to happen. Okay, and. <laughs> There's just, there's just, um, it, it's just a very, very, um, it's a, it's a messy plot. I've said that before, but, but the, the whole, the whole movie just feels like something is missing, okay? And you don't have a real antagonist. You don't have strong protagonists. And to top things off, suddenly they're, they're they, at the, near the end of the movie, guns are blazing. And then, um, I'm led to believe that this is supposed to be an intense action scene where I'm supposed to root for the characters. I really can't root for any of these characters just because I, I really find them very non-believable. The James Frank, I mean rather Theo James as four, he's just uh he's just a stiff, okay, no pun intended, but he's a stiff, but he's 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 emotionless. He doesn't he he he's very good at playing a model. That's all he's good at playing. Now I'll tell you that there is one character that I really really liked. Okay. I didn't really really like him, but there's a character that I felt was strong and that is the character of um of Eric played by Jay Courtney. He's the character that you love to hate and I loved to hate him because of what he stands for. But something tell something uh, of, about his character led him to being be, become quite predictable as well. And another thing and w but one thing that I do like about him is that he plays his role well mainly because He's played that type of role many times. <laughs> He's played a type of mean, badass character in Jack Reacher when he went up against Tom Cruise. And he also played that type of character in, in Live Free or Die Hard. So him playing Eric in uh, in this movie is no stretch for him. They casted him perfectly and uh, he was right for the role. Now, with a character like that, with an antagonist like that, I expected more in terms of uh, a climax between him and... And, uh, and 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 uh, and and Triss. Okay, I, I felt that uh, there should have been more. I felt that uh, I felt that the, the conflict that the physical conflict that they had, uh, like when they went up against each other, it should have been something that I felt like he deserved it. Okay, but it was very lackluster. Okay, now I understand that this is all like this is PG, PG thirteen. It's it's geared towards uh, teens and young adults. But there still needs to be a certain level of believability there. Now, people in the audience, a lot of the, 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 the teen girls that were there were all clapping at the end of the movie. So I'm pretty positive that, you know what, this is definitely geared towards that demographic. But regardless of which demographic it's towards, there is, you know, a, still a certain level of quality storytelling that you have to implement in a film. And what I saw wasn't it. <laughs> we characters... Okay, a messy plot and plot holes and just um, I feel it's a little bit anticlimactic. And, and there you have it. That's all I got to say in this video. 
Um, it's really not a great film, but I'm sure that the, 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 the targeted demographic will enjoy it. But uh, for someone like me who, who knows nothing about it and, um, and I'm going in with an open mind, I feel that, um, that it, it really, really isn't that great of a film. Uh, it's directed by Neil Berger, uh, who directed Limitless, which I really, really enjoyed. And this isn't one of his uh, better films. I'm giving it a 3.5 out of 10. Um, I, I, I liked Jay Courtney. I liked the set design. I liked the music in the movie. And, I'm, and I also liked the effort that they put in. But other than that, um, it, it isn't that great. All right? So there you have it. Oh, I totally felt that Maggie Q was also underused. She was totally underused. All right? <laughs> and that's it. That's all I got to say in this movie. This is one of those... Uh, about this movie, this is one of those films that doesn't translate well as a film from a novel... There's just too many sections of the novel that I'm positive that were left out, okay? And that's it. As always, if you enjoyed this review, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter, at Raging Nation. My name is Alex Yu. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. You know, he could appear in those films, but so far there's no plan no plans for a solo Hulk film. Now let's talk about Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. has played Iron 